This is going to be a very brief video where we are revisiting uh, the 7mm PRC. So, just for a quick rundown, this is a 7mm PRC fully custom rifle that I put together myself using a prefit barrel. It's a proof barrel, an MDT brake, MDT chassis, uh, Terminus Zeus, or Kratos action, sorry, and an Athlon scope with some worn rings and a protector bag, MDT magazine. So, all the equipment and components that we're using in the test will be detailed out in the description below the video. For those of you that want to see a written out description of what we have going on here, I will put that in that description. So please uh, refer to that if you have any questions or you can leave a comment. That being said, we are testing the 195 grain Burger Extreme Outer Limits bullets again because we saw some serious potential with that bullet in this barrel using a few different powders in the very early beginning of our testing with this particular gun. We saw, and if I can remember to put a clip of the video in this video, I'll try to do it right here up in the corner where we normally put the target. But uh, we saw some really, really stable, I, you could call it stringing, but just every powder charge, it seemed like the vertical would change a little bit as far as where the bullets would land, but um, not much as far as the horizontal. But we had a really, really tight group, even though we weren't shooting for a group, but we were changing the powder charge every time in a test and it just seemed like it was really stable powder for this bullet in this gun. So I know that's not really helpful without a picture of the target to describe what I'm talking about, but essentially we're coming back to Vitivori in 568 because in 570, we could get a lot more velocity out of it, but I don't think we were getting a full burn by the end of the barrel. So we were seeing some inconsistencies with the velocity, even though we could get some decent groups out of it. I don't think that it was the optimal powder for this bullet in this gun. I think if we had a longer barrel, it would be probably perfect. But with this barrel being 24 inches, I think that we need a slightly faster burning powder. And I don't even know that N568 is perfect for it either, but we're gonna give it another try because it showed some real potential. We are going to start by sending two ciders with 67 grains down into the center diamond because the barrel has been fully cleaned it has not had a round put through it yet since it has been fully cleaned. We're gonna send these two ciders and then we're gonna shoot three groups with 67 grains, 68 grains, and 69 grains. We're gonna track the velocity, we're gonna look at the accuracy, and hopefully one of these will be good enough to use it hunting this year and we'll be able to show some of that footage in the fall. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna put two ciders down range and then we're gonna shoot for groups. Twenty-six oh nine. All right, twenty-six sixty-one. So we saw a pretty big velocity change in the first two shots, but hopefully that will kind of stabilize the internal conditions of the bore, and we'll be able to move on and shoot some groups and get some better consistency now that we've uh, fouled up the barrel a little bit. Okay, so just for reference, we are using Peterson Large Rifle Primer seven millimeter PRC. Brass. I know it's kind of silly to say large rifle primer, but I almost feel like I have to specify that constantly anymore just because there's so many different variations of brass manufacturers. Um, not that there is with this cartridge, just to be clear, but nonetheless, we're using Peterson brass, 7 PRC brass, 195 grain burger, extreme outer limits bullets, Federal 215 gold medal match, large rifle magnum primers, and we're shooting Vitivori N568 from 67 to 69 grains in the base to ogive, case base to ogive measurement is 2.653. I don't know what that works out to as far as the overall length, but I don't measure it because it's very inconsistent with these um, these hollow points. They just, they don't work out to be real consistent most times. So we're gonna go ahead and actually start on the bottom of the target here. We're gonna go for the bottom left diamond because that's where my bipod wants me to be right now and I'm not gonna fiddle with it. So. We're just gonna shoot for the bottom left diamond, then we'll probably work our way right across the target, and uh, hopefully we'll get something good out of this, because I'd really like to use this bullet for hunting, but it might be a little too slow. But we're shooting 195 grain bullet, so I don't expect it to get to 3,000, but I was kind of hoping to get like somewhere between 27 and 28, so we'll see. All right, 67 grains of Vitivorian 568, bottom left diamond. 2654. 2654 again. Wow. 2651. Wow. 
that's impressive. Okay, so this is really interesting. I actually am having some kind of a glitch with the Garmin. I've never seen this before, but I, I'll get to it here in a second. So that group was good. It wasn't a one whole group by any means, but it was still like good with me. Like I'm totally fine with that. I'm really confused by the velocity. So the average muzzle velocity was 2653. Now mind you, the minimum was 2651. The max was 2654. So we have an extreme spread. I'm rounding these numbers, by the way. The extreme spread was literally 3.5 feet per second. That's the extreme spread. So that's the far, I know this is redundant for most people, but the minimum charge and the maximum charge, the difference between them was 3.5 feet per second. The standard deviation shows on here 21.3 feet per second. So that is just flat out wrong. Assuming that the velocities it read were accurate, that's way off. I don't know what the actual extreme spread is, but it's less than one. <laughs> so I, that, I'm that i just very confused by that. I don't know how that happened or why that says that, but um, maybe it will correct itself. I don't think it will, but that's just really weird. So anyway, that's the first time I've ever seen the Garmin just throw bad info, but uh, I'm assuming the velocities were correct and they were insanely stable so that was pretty cool to see but we're going to move on um the next charge weight is going to be 68 grains of vitivory in 568 and we're going to be going for the bottom of the center diamond here okay sorry for the weird positioning but my hands like in pain because it's so cold uh the standard deviation was actually not less than one i lied the standard deviation was 1.6 which is still ridiculously impressive um very very consistent but uh it was not 21.3 that's that was wrong <laughs> okay 68.0 grains of vitivorian 568 on the bottom of the center diamond here i keep forgetting to move the point of impact sorry 27.13 2706, 2705. So that group opened up quite a bit. It's probably twice the size of the first one that we shot, but the velocity consistency was still very impressive. So we had a average muzzle velocity of 2708, an extreme spread of eight, and a standard deviation of 3.5. So again, very, very good numbers as far as velocity consistency is concerned. And the group size is still, well, I I want it smaller than that. Let's just say that. But it's it's not horrible. Like, it's not throwing shotgun patterns. But I still expect this gun to be able to print better than that. Now, I will say, we haven't done any seating depth tests with this bullet. So, clearly, this powder is a winner as far as consistency is concerned with this bullet in this barrel. But I would like to do some seating depth tests and just see how that affects things out of curiosity's sake. Because if we can get velocity that's this consistent between 27 and 2800 ideally then uh i would like to see if that we can just play with the seating depth and see if we can tighten up the groups based on that alone with keeping that same consistent velocity now again that being said that first group i was totally cool with that wasn't exactly 2700 but it was close enough that uh, it's going to kill anything that i shoot with it at any distance that i'd feel comfortable shooting it anyway so that will work um clearly this is stable i'm just really impressed with the the spreads here but uh, we're going to shoot this last group we're going to go to the bottom right diamond and uh, we're going to put 69 grains of n568 in that sucker well we gave the barrel plenty of time to cool off since it's so warm out here um <clears throat> i'm sure you guys will probably be able to hear it but hopefully the sound of this helicopter that's about to fly by won't be deafening because it's like really loud but we're going to be going for the bottom right diamond here with 69 grains of Vitivorian 568. They're like literally heading right towards us too. 2789. 2756 or 57. 2770. So our spreads opened up quite a bit, obviously, because um, you know you guys are watching the videos and hearing the same thing I am. Our average muzzle velocity was 2772. We had an extreme spread of 32 feet per second. 
and a standard deviation of 13. So would not want to use that load as far as if you were just to gauge that from the performance of the other two. But I will say, super impressed with that first load. Shot really good. Consistency as far as the velocity and the accuracy was great. I was more than happy with that. The second one was, it had really good velocity consistency, but the accuracy was lackluster. And then same thing with the third one, except the velocity wasn't even that consistent on the third one either. So first two, get a thumbs up, minus the second one having accuracy issues. The first one really was just kind of the one to go with. But that being said, I do think that 68 grains still has potential if we were to go back and do some seating depth testing and see if we can keep that same velocity consistency and tighten up the group. Even the first one I think could have done a little better as far as accuracy is concerned, but it showed tremendous potential for being an awesome, awesome hunting load. And that may be the only kind of, like that might be the best accuracy we can get consistently, consistently out of the gun, but I think it can do better. So that being said, that's gonna conclude this test. I know it was kind of a short one, but I just wanted to take you guys along for the ride on this one because I still really wanna use this bullet, but I think we have to do a little more tweaking on it to get it exactly where we want it to be. So. Thank you guys for watching. I always appreciate the support tremendously. Y'all continue to glorify God in all that you do. Stay risen, and we will see you on the next video.